All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ted Kolowiak, who is in Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Ted? I'm doing well, John. Thanks for having me as a guest on your show. Yeah, he's much sought after sales management leadership coach, business consultant as president of Ted Case Sales Management Training. And uh, Ted has also written a number of books. And what we're going to talk today is the second of his books, which has uh, just been um, published. The first one was, was Lessons Learned in Sales Management. This is Lessons Learned in Leadership, 21 Lessons Learned in Leadership um, so Ted, let's let's get straight into it. So after you did your other book, what why did you decide a few years later to go on and do the leadership ones after you did the the sales management book? Well, I you know much the same as in sales and sales management, I had a game plan. I uh, didn't want to just to uh, be one and done and be uh, one right. author, one book. So I wrote the uh, the first book, Twenty One Lessons Learned in Sales Management, based on my experience over uh, 40 plus years in sales and sales leadership positions, sales management positions. And I wrote it, wrote it from my perspective, um, things you know about coaching sure. and hiring and those types of things. And my game plan was to write the second book, which I uh, published this year, 21 Lessons Learned in Leadership, to kind of build on the, on the first book. And rather than just from my perspective, I uh, used my network. I, um, I asked people that I've known over the course of years, mm -hmm. my mentors, coaches, people that are, are, are on LinkedIn, sales professionals and sales leaders, send me an example of exemplary leadership. Tell me a little right. bit about your experiences and I'll rewrite those and I'll put them into stories um, because I, I'm big about uh, leadership and action as opposed to mm -hmm. leadership and theory. Um, yeah. So, in, in, in fact, the, the title of the first chapter of the book is uh, Leadership in Action is Leadership Defined. Yeah. And so, so that's you, how so, I got onto the premise. Uh, so, so tell me, then, what, when you mean by leadership in action, what, what do you mean by that? Well, in, you know, in the course of the book is uh, 21 stories, basically, of individuals who are typical average business people um, who are fighting the battle day to day. Uh, whether it's in sales or in uh, another port uh, mm -hmm. part of the uh, of the operation, uh, but they are they're focused on uh, delivering. Not they're not just walking the talk; they're actually doing the talk. They they are mm -hmm. out there uh, demonstrating uh, ex exemplary leadership, not simply by what they say to do, but what they are doing. Yeah. And so leadership in action comes comes across a big you know observation of people saying here's. Here's how to lead, but no, I'm going to show you how to lead. So that's that's yeah. The I, I think that's I think that's incredibly important because people have lost sight of that a lot of the times. Is that you model behavior? You you can all day long. I mean, we see it all the time in 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 culture, politics, and everything. You can pontificate all day long, and you can say, uh, and in leadership positions, you can, as you say, you can talk the talk. But if you don't model the behavior, and that's what human beings react to, is 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 modeled behavior and not, you know, words, because I mean, at the end of the day, people, it, nothing you say to somebody will ever be stronger than the conclusions they come to themselves. And if they see you modeling the behavior, then they're more likely to say, okay, this person means it. Well, it's the same thing in sales. You know, you, you yeah. think in terms of why people buy and who they buy from, you know, and a trust is a big factor, obviously in sales. And, and uh, the concept there is basically, the actions that the salesperson um, delivers or shows uh, mm -hmm. to the potential customer uh, really is what drives the uh, the intent of the sale. Um, you know, if if the salesperson is working in the customer's best interest uh, while protecting the company at the same time, it's easy to see that. So you know, you can talk uh, simply about leadership and trust in leadership, but really, leadership defined uh, for when it comes down to trust is really seeing that leader's actions and seeing how they support the individuals, uh, you know, their co-workers, uh, which uh, builds the trust. Yeah. And then you, you have a, you have lesson three is be a great human being. I mean, I think that's just a lesson for everybody today. Maybe everybody could strive to be better human beings. Um, I know I probably could. 
Well, maybe yeah. I couldn't, but hey, you know, I'm just saying that to be humble. <laughs> no, I mean, we can all strive to be better, better human beings. But why, why is being a great human being a, a so important in leadership well, context? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, with the, with the pressure to deliver results, we lose sight about that. We, we are, especially in sales. I mean, you, you know, we're the, we're the part of the organization that has the number on the back. So we're measured based on delivering those numbers. And, and the fact of the matter is pretty, pretty simple. Um, you know, you don't deliver the numbers, you're out of the organization. And it's easy for a sales manager, a sales leader to get into that perspective of, well, you know, the numbers aren't there. So I'm going to crack the whip. I'm going to be more difficult. I'm going to be a harder manager. I'm going to really get my team and, 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 and you know, it's, it's anti-motivation. It's, yeah. not, it's not what you really want. You want them to, to respect you as a, as a leader and work with them. And part of the concept of being a great leader is to, to treat people as you would like to be treated, to, to show that the respect and, and gain their confidence and their trust, be competent, build their confidence. And you do that by being a good human being, a great human being, and understanding the definition of empathy. And empathy yeah. is really about uh, you know putting yourself in another person's position, knowing what they're going through without actually having experienced that yourself, without having gone through that yourself. So I think that yeah. that's... The, the concept of that chapter about being a great human being. Yeah, and, and just one thing on empathy. I mean, I always like to, to stress this just for people like the, there's a difference between empathy and sympathy because the two often yeah. get often get uh, confused or conflated. Um, you can be empathetic. You can be a great human being. That doesn't mean that you still can't deliver hard messages to people. In fact, if you're being truly empathetic and you know that something is going to help or be good for a person when you put them in those issues, I mean, it it is part of being empathetic is having those difficult conversations. Yeah, Jed, you know, that's part of being a great leader and a great manager and having challenging conversations and, and motivating your, your team to get to the point where they they understand, you know, you want to be, you can't be their best friend. You, yep. you want to be friendly. But the fact of the yep. matter is you, you have to, you have to have that, that concept down to that we're all in the game together. And, and if you're working together for the best interest of the organization and other, there's a much better chance of the, the sales numbers delivering themselves. I, I've always been of that, that the theory that the, in that action, that um, you know, there's a there's a gray line that you have to separate between results and people. If you strive too much for the results and put too much pressure on that, uh, people won't respect you. They, they'll turn you off. And if you're too friendly, if you're on the other side of the equation, well, they'll take advantage of you then as well, too. So a great leader, great managers, especially sales managers, know the balance between people um, in empath and empathy and uh, delivering their numbers. Yeah, no, I, I think balance is critical. And obviously, um, you know, balance is certainly lacking in a lot of areas today. And I think that's I think what people really need to focus on that piece. And I guess another one that jumped out at me was uh, your lesson number seven is the ladder goes both ways. <laughs> uh, that's, that, yeah, I, I enjoy that story because that's from a uh, one of my uh, co-workers from many years ago in the direct mail business. And if you're if you're in, if your listeners know anything about the direct mail business, there is a very challenging sales uh, oriented type of business. Uh, but her um, her father was in the restaurant business, and uh, he you know you can judge you can tell a lot about people about how they treat waiters and waitresses mm -hmm. um, in restaurants. And um, you know the latter goes both ways is really about uh, the her father's story about being in the restaurant business and making sure that his team um, not only treated the customers the way they wanted to be treated, but they treated each other that way as well too. And yeah. knowing that uh, you know, there are times where your career can go up, it can also go down depending yeah. on how you are, you are treated or treating others. And that's really the, the premise of that, uh, that chapter in the book. Yeah, yeah, no, because that was always, as you always say, is like obviously, you know, be careful as you climb the ladder that you don't tread on too many people's hands because those same people will be waiting there to kick you on the way down. <laughs> right, right. I, and I remember years ago reading someone tell me, well, you don't have to be nice to people on the way up if you don't plan on going back down again. <laughs> well, well, that doesn't interesting that doesn't hold true. <laughs> you know, that that's a one that's a one way perspective, sure, of, of trying to just be out there for yourself and. Uh, 
that doesn't play too well for uh, management or for leadership. No, absolutely. And I also like the other one that comes after it, lesson eight, is there's no power if there's no resistance. Well, the good part about that is I had some assistance there. The person who wrote the foreword for the book, David Paul Dean, uh, was the former president of DeVry University, one of my mentors, one of my coaches. And I asked him not only to write the foreword, but to contribute to a, a chapter in the book. And, and he's absolutely spot on when he talks about you know, no power, no resistance. You you can't just have people following you that are yes men. You know, you mm-hmm. want those individuals who are going to challenge and question. And and as a as a leader, you you accept that that uh, uh, atmosphere. Uh, you want people to come back to you and say, well, why are we doing it this way? And let's have a discussion about it. So it's not just an autocratic uh, society with an author- authoritarian person. Uh, driving all the leadership decisions. That doesn't work that way. So you build the yeah. uh, leadership and you build a good bond and you build loyalty and uh, it's a good teamwork approach. Um, and I really appreciate uh, David uh, contributing that chapter to the book. It's great, uh, great story. Yeah, and, and I think what's great about that as well is that I think uh, basically, I mean, as, as we know, is when you get smart people together and they challenge each other, you get better results. And I think that's where that's where leadership humility needs to come into play is like you. I mean, you as a leader, maybe you do have the best idea, but you need people around you to challenge it or to make sure it is. And maybe it is and maybe it, it can be modified. Maybe it can be made better. But if you're not open to that, you know, then you're always then you're never going to get the best idea if it's always coming from one direction only. Right. Right. I think, you know, it's it's true in, in almost every business environment that I've been in that the organizations that are uh, loyal people, that are great people, they, they built the organization. They want some input. Uh, they want some say-so. Uh, they want to be part of the decision-making process. Uh, they want their ideas to be shared. And, you know, when you're building a vision or, or a culture, that's all about individuals uh, uh, contributing. Uh, so everybody participates. It's not just one person or two people at the top who are driving the, uh, uh, the entire game plan. They are uh, they're taking ideas from uh, from parts of the organization and and utilizing those ideas to the best interest of everybody involved. And obviously, from a leader leadership perspective, there will be those moments or those times when you do maybe have to impose something when you do have to say, I'm sorry, this is the way it has to be. Uh, but if you're if you're collaborative the rest of the time, then people will accept that a lot more than they would if that was your go to style. Yeah, it, it totally makes sense, you know, from the concept that uh, they understand who you are. You know, you've built mm-hmm. that relationship with the with the people in the organization, whether it's your direct reports or if it's, um, you know, 300, uh, the 300th person down the, the food chain. Uh, they understand who you are at the, at the top of the organization and uh, you have that relationship. So they know who you are. They know your management style and they, they know there's going to be times where you have to make the decision. They expect that. They expect you as the leader to to step up and make those t- tough decisions. Uh, and so they'll, you know, if you're if you're collaborative throughout the process and respect individuals along the way, you have a much better chance then of not only gaining loyalty but uh, having a tough decision go through. You know, this is especially true if you know in, in cutbacks or in layoffs and those types of things yeah. that are really difficult challenges and we all like to avoid, but it happens. No, no, it happens. And if you've ever been through it, so fortunately I have in a, in, in a number of instances been through that process of, of having to downsize in the past. Yeah. And it's probably the hardest one, obviously, because when you have to let somebody go purely for economics, it's they doing their job well, you'd love to keep them, but it's just the way it goes. But yeah, those are the moments when when you will know whether you whether you have been yeah. a good leader or not and how the how people react to you and how the people who are left behind react so yeah it, it, it's challenging it's very challenging at times I know coaching is obviously a big thing with you I mean you've obviously had coaches your coach yourself so coaching with commitment uh I often feel like that coaching a lot of people pay lip service to it or or they'll get a sudden they'll get suddenly inspired and say, oh, Ted, you know, I'm going to start coaching you on a regular basis. And I set up a meeting invite and all of that. And then maybe I do the first one and the rest of them I cancel because something else comes up. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> no, that, that's that's not coaching, but that's you know I've, <laughs> I've experienced both sides of that equation as well too. Where, I, where, where <laughs> I've been placed in that position. Okay, well it's time to do some coaching, and forced coaching is not coaching whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that's just putting putting yourself in a very difficult position. Uh, so what is but, what is def, define re, define coaching and define what coaching in, with commitment is. Yeah, well, I always used to. Um, I guess one of the one of the things that I would talk about uh, many times about um, about coaching is that there's a a mutual uh, respect for each other and a mutual uh, intended outcome. Um, it's not just about um, an individual saying, "Well, here's here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to mm -hmm. teach you how to do the job." And, you know, that's training. Yep. Uh, coaching is more about uh, further development. In enhancing the experience, in allowing the individual to learn on their own. Um, so you know, you, it's very simple for a uh, for a manager uh, in training to say, "Here's here's how you will do this." Or, you know, here, here's your script that you're going to read in the call center, right? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, that coaching really is well. Let's enhance. What did you think about that that call? How did that go? What were some of the positive things that you did? Uh, what would you improve? What what did you think you could work on to do better? And it's really, it's all about just getting the individual to answer the questions themselves, to think for themselves. That's that's what ultimately coaching is all about. Even though as a manager, you may have the answer, you may tell them, here's what you need to do better. But the majority of times, it's really about allowing that individual to think for themselves and get that, you come to that conclusion uh, on their own. And yeah. the, all the, that's more its development, uh, which is really the ultimate aspect of, uh, of coaching. Yeah. And, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, that's what people, that's from the first route of communication. People will uh, believe conclusions they come to themselves above and beyond anything you can ever say to them. So you're absolutely correct. I mean, the job of a coach is to help people to provide the framework for people to be able to come to the conclusions themselves and to be mm -hmm. able to set, you know, self-correct or, and self-enhance or whatever. Yeah. You, you know, if, if you say it, um, I may have a doubt, yeah. but if I say it, well, it, no it makes sense, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. So I, absolutely. You know, that's just, <laughs> that's the concept that, that you want that person who's being coached to say, well, yes, I, I, I agree with you now because, I've experienced it myself and I've came, I've come to this conclusion and, and yes, my, my sales presentation needs to be a little bit uh, more enhanced and be a better listener as opposed to doing all the talking, you know, th this is what yeah. you, you want them, them to, uh, to come to that conclusion on their own. Yeah. And the final one I just wanted to ask you about, because I think this is a, this is a very significant is your less you're 21 on the way to becoming a great leader, be a great manager as well. And I think sometimes that people go, you know, people love to say, well, it's a big difference between leadership and management. And you say, yeah, there are differences. However, without if you're in a leadership position, if you don't have fundamental management skills as well, it's gonna, it, it's not, you're not going to be as effective as if you have good leadership and good management skills. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you this, uh, John, I was listening to one of your podcasts uh, uh, about transformational leadership where mm -hmm. you had uh, Nicole Jansen on, and right. she was talking about, uh, you know, getting the best out of others. And I, I would wanted to jump into the conversation at that point because she was spot on. Um, and leadership isn't about a position or authority yeah. or any of those things. It, you know, it's about trust and loyalty and competence. And one of those key things about being a great leader is to put in your time and learn to be a great manager. Yeah. You know, and I, I appreciate what you said, because in, in theory, you can write all the differences between management and leadership. You can say, you know, managers task oriented, you manage by doing your you coordinate workers and then leaders on the other side, they're people oriented. They lead by influence. Mm -hmm. They develop people. Sure. But there's a crossover approach. You know, both of those jobs, manager and leader are intertwined. Yeah. They, they go together. They go hand in hand. So the more competent you are at learning the job on the managerial side, at least you have the foundation and you're in a better position to be a better leader. It's not, there's yeah. no guarantees, but at least mm -hmm. if you have that, that foundation, that thought process down there, well, I've done this job. So I know what you're going through right now and I can relate to you. And that helps me be a better leader because I understand what you're doing. 
Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I think that's I think that's totally critical because otherwise, you know, otherwise we sell this false idea to people that when you get into a leadership position, as I said, you can be all like, you know, painting pretty pictures and saying, OK, here's my vision. And somehow yeah. it's going to metamorphosize into a result. Well, it's far better if you're able to say, here's the vision. And then you're able to drill down a bit and say, I know there's a lot of pieces that need to go into this. So what do you need? What do you need? I understand. Yeah. I mean, that's far more credible in the long run. And to be honest, it's far, you're going to be far more successful. Yeah, absolutely. It gets back to that. It's not just about me making all the decisions. We're, doing, we're in this together and making decisions uh, for yeah. the benefit of both of us and the organization. Totally makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been great, Ted. All of Ted's information is going to be below this video and links to both his books, uh, indeed. But before we go, Ted, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, I am, uh, as the president of Ted K Sales Management Consulting uh, and Training, I uh, assist uh, organizations uh, uh, with their sales process, uh, a little coaching, a little training, a little facilitating. Uh, more or less, I'm a, an individual who can help uh, teams uh, better themselves. I, I live by the premise, your customers will get better when you get better. That's simply my thought process. And more, the more investing uh, in yourself that you do, uh, the better off uh, you will be and your organization and your customers will be better for it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's one thing, and I say this very often, but I think everybody should consider is investing in their own professional development. We spend a lot of time investing in other things and hobbies and everything else, but very rarely do we spend any money on the thing that puts bread on our table. So yeah. I would highly recommend. So I highly recommend check out Ted's book, check out Ted's website. And again, thank you for joining me today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And thanks again, Ted, for joining us from Austin. My pleasure, John. Thanks for having me.